inside here, we've got our Spectra SP100s with a UHF antenna. We also have the cable inside the box for updating firmware and two batteries are also inc included. So I'll just put, place the battery in and simply turn it on. Then I'll see the lights coming on. So I've got battery light, a Wi-Fi light because it's got built-in Wi-Fi and then I'm looking for my satellite light over there and then obviously my UHF light there. And then screw this on top of my GPS pole. This replaces our current SP85. It's got 672 channels and a blade technology and a built-in IMU for immersion measurement units. It's automatically connected straight away very seamlessly to the SP100. Now I want to do a bit of surveying in the car park. So I'm going to hit up here on the big picture of the antenna and then just go start survey and then it will seamlessly connect to our VRS network. Connected up straight away with it having an inertial measurement unit. We have to do the same procedure each time we connect to the VRS network. And there you can see my accuracies are under 20 millimeters on the horizontal and vertical. So now I can go into measure. I can just measure in uh, SL for my spot levels, change it to a rapid point because I'm not really too overly concerned about the uh, quality of the points just for doing spot levels. Perhaps if I was doing a more in-depth survey, I would change it to topo point. Now, there are differences between these points. We can go over that in another video. Okay. So as I'm measuring now, I'm just going to hit here, rapid point, measure, and measure it as SL. Observation stored. 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 And you can see how quickly and how seamlessly it's picking up points, which is going to be an amazing tool for surveyors coming through now because we're picking up points almost instantly. And this is going to really increase our workflow productivity. So one great feature now about uh, Trimble Access is how easy it is to stake out. So if I just turn on my foundation layout, for example, and then was to zoom into my foundation layout, if I needed to stake out a grid line, for example, I can just tap on the grid line and then go stake out to the line. Is there a surface we need to include in it? Well, there's not on this one. So we're just gonna go start and then it's just gonna give us a direction we need to go which will be relative to the line. We can also make that a bit smaller so we can see here where we're looking. And we know on here on the horizontal offset, I've got to come two points. And then we're near enough there now. So when I get to zero, I'm going to get it as close as I can to zero within the realms of GPS. So here at the moment, I'm two foot couple of mil off now the beauty of having the IMU if I needed to spray a line traditionally I'd have to go up here probably spray half my pole up obviously with the IMU now I can turn it to the side do any marking out I need to do and as you can see I'm still getting three five mil accuracies at length at about a 15 degree angle that's the beauty of the IMU so this is a brilliant bit of kit for setting out using um, Trimble Access. Trimble Access will take DXFs, IFCs, XMLs and TTMs. So we can do cut and fill surfaces, we can do alignments and we can just do our simple DXF. And of course we can do the old CSV in, stake out point by point. So if I was to stake this out for example and just go start, 
get it back to where I was roughly within, say, a couple of mil. I can then just go measure, topo point, measure that, auto, and then I can store, see my deltas, make sure I'm within my tolerance, and then store. And that's also a great bit of QA as well, because if anything ever does come back, which is potentially wrong, we have got it in the controller now showing us that we have set it out correctly to the information given. So a great feature, which is gonna be really important for surveyors, is the IMU and the ability using the Z-Blade technology and the 672 channels to go and into our more difficult kind of areas where traditionally we would struggle surveying. But now due to the SP100, we can actually get a successful shot. So if I was to go here, for example, I can still see here, I'm still within 20 mil, 30 mil of my accuracies, which is well within uh, my GPS tolerances for measuring this tree. And I could even, try and get the pole in here which is something you could never do on a traditional total station i have gone up to a little bit higher on the tolerances than what i would like but still we're going to be able to get into difficult locations and survey definitely things like this curb line here using the imu technology i can just go curb rather than having traditionally go over here or traditionally surveyors they would probably have to use a total station this sp100 now eliminates the need for having to bring out the total station for these difficult to reach areas which is just a great bonus when we're surveying we can make a continuous gps survey making the surveyor's life much easier as well so if i was to survey this curb for example traditionally this would be impossible almost you can see the tree canopies are top on top way within i can even hold it a bit more a bit more upright so you can see now this is kind of in the area of what i would call medium dense foliage where a traditional gps kit would just not survey this now is giving me accuracies of 20 millimeters which is pretty fantastic and then i can just go and measure measure my curb observation stored also as well because we've got the imu the immersion measurement unit we don't have to struggle trying to get this upright now we've got the capabilities to survey curbs like this observation stored the immersion measurement unit will work up to 30 degrees Obviously, the further we tilt it, the slightly less accurate it will go, but still within the realms of GPS quality. So if I was, for example, to survey a wall now, a few years ago, we wouldn't have even attempted with a GPS. Now, with the SP100, I can come here, tilt it, still getting good precisions, and I'm measuring my wall. Observation stored. And you can see how easy that is. Obviously now using the Z-Blade technology, the IMU built in, using the power of Trimble Access with the, paired with the TSC5, which runs Android, we found it now very easy to go along and survey these hard to reach areas, which traditionally we wouldn't be able to do. Now I've got base mode, rover mode. I currently want it in rover mode and start the survey. It's gonna seamlessly connect through and also connect to the VRS network, giving us RTK corrections. Now, I have got the IMU turned on. I am just going to turn the IMU off just for a second so I don't have to start rocking it backwards and forwards. And there you go. It's now given me RTK corrections of 12 mil and 17 mil, but I am working without the IMU, which you can see here. Now, the lovely thing about Trimble Access is it's just very, very simple to use. So I've just put in some simplistic um, foundations just so you can see. So these are foundations. Hopefully you can see this okay. And I'm just going to go in and out really, really quickly. And you can see how seamless and how smooth the TSC 5s handling it. It is quite a small DXF, but still it handles it really smoothly. Another great little thick tool on this is Trimble Maps. So if I hit up here, 
and then go to Trimble Maps, I can turn on Trimble Maps. You will also notice here, I've got a couple of different types of extensions as well as my DXF as we've gone over so that it will take XMLs, IFCs, DXFs and uh, TTMs as well. I can go to my transparency and I can actually turn this right up. So it's almost like looking at Google Maps on your phone, as you can see. And you can see that's exactly pinpoint where we are. As you can see, it's a very lovely high resolution screen. We can go in and out, super responsive. And also what I like to do is just turn the transparency down a little bit on there, just so I can see a little bit more of what I'm actually working with. Or if we didn't want it, we've got a street view, train view or none. So we can go to traditional none. Now, if I wanted to stake out a corner, for example, I just simply click on that corner and my little measure is now gone to a stake out. So you'll notice here now, if I just do a long press on a blank bit of screen and clear selection, that we've got a measure. So I can go straight into my measure and have a look at this now and I can do my surveying as per needed. Engineering wise, I've got an engineering drawing on here and I can just tap on that corner of foundation and stake out and it's gonna instantly try and take me to that corner. I can make this a little bit bigger and get a nice arrow so I know I need to go four meters over that way. You can change it from north to the sun depending on your preferences and you can also, with the power of Trimble Access, go into options, go into deltas and edit what we actually see on the screen, which is such a really handy feature to have because it could be the fact that maybe I do want to see my easting northing, maybe I do want to see my surface elevation. All these things are within here we can look at and then save it to the survey style on the fly. So no going backwards and forwards out of menus. And then we could even add in a surface if we wanted to add in a surface so another great feature we've got on here is when we go into our layer manager is we've got our point files so at the moment it's just linking our jobs but if i did have a csv in here i could turn off my csv or turn it on as needed map files i can have a look in here so i've got a foundation and i could even if i wanted to have a look in the autocad uh, or the DXF drawing and then turn on individual layers inside. So at the moment I can turn on just my grid lines if I so wished or vice versa. I might just want the foundations on. So I could turn on the foundation, you could turn that on or I could turn on just the foundations just to make things nice and simple for us. So with the versatility of Trimble Access, we can go in and do that or we can have nothing on. Another feature which people tend to miss out is the filter one. Now, this is a very handy tool. So as a default, I like to leave everything on. And you'll notice there how things have instantly popped on the screen. That's what we've surveyed. So I can very, very simply turn off what I've surveyed. And you'll notice everything has a symbol next to it. So I can go to the corresponding symbol and then turn off that corresponding symbol and it will get rid of those points. One thing I do like to turn off on this is just the base point, which would be the VRS point, which will be quite a way away, I would imagine. So I turn off that point there. So we've got a couple of points I've surveyed over here. So one great feature in Trimble Access now is if we were going to say that was maybe in engineering terms, the top of a MOT stockpile or top of the capping. I could now select these points. Very easy to do, go through, create a surface, and then I'm just gonna call it s1 for surface one and then as you'll see as i created that surface it's actually made a model with inside of the controller itself so when you have a look in here now and i go to map files i should see s1 selected i can turn that off and have no model 
or I can turn it on. Now, another brilliant thing about Trimble Access is, is how versatile what you see on the screen is. So if I was to go into settings, for example, I can maybe turn on the elevations, might want them on. Method symbols, I like to keep on method symbols so I know the methodology of a symbol um, as we've gone through on the filter. And now I'll go over to my surface and I can change that to color gradient and triangles. Have a look in here. And another great thing in Trimble Access is if I did do a triangle, which I didn't like and needed to delete, is I can highlight the said triangle, do a long press on it and delete the selected triangle. So I'm actually manipulating the model as I go, which is amazing to do because when you're doing stockpile calculations, you'll quite find as engineers, we know and surveyors, it's very easy just to put in a point inside of your surface you don't want. And now with that power, we can just delete out the triangles as needed. So if I was to stake out this DTM, which I might want to do, I can just go to stake out, stake out DTMs. And then I'm just going to choose S1 as my surface. Now I could, with the power of Trimble Access, put in a perpendicular or vertical up and down, which would be very, very handy if we were doing say finish level and you wanted 250 below for your top of capping layer let's say for example for this example i'm gonna leave it set to zero stake out stake out dtms s1 and then start and then it will give us then all the information we could possibly um need with inside trimble access so if i was to walk inside of this surface now it would give me the cut and fill and the design of elevations. Again, all this is customizable. And also with the power of Trimble Access, we can look at our, one thing I like to do with surfaces is whenever I create a surface, I always like to look at it in 3D. And you can see there with the power of Trimble Access, we're able to go through and really look at that in 3D and then see where I am in relation to that as well. From here, we could do cut and fill calculations and volume calculations. So now with Trimble Access, we might want to stake out an alignment. We have the ways and means of doing this through maps here. I have an XML with a track alignment on, so I can turn on my alignment. Now, the brilliant thing about this now is with the alignment is I've got my alignment here in my settings to show any stational values on it. So it is showing me the stational values up and down these track alignments. Um, as you can see, that's where I am and that's the chainage, etc. So we wanna stake out this alignment so I can go stake out. Intervals, I've left it 10 meter intervals. We could add a surface if we wanted a surface in. For these purposes, I just wanna stake out the alignment, enter and next. Now I can stake out station on the alignment or simply go straight to the alignment. Now, let's say I wanted a station on the alignment. I can pick the station I want to pick there and then I could do my intervals at five meter intervals, go start survey. And that is actually taking me to the point I wanted on the alignment. If I didn't want that, if I just simply wanted to stake out that alignment, didn't matter where, up and down the chainages, I would just go start. We all also have a vertical constraints offset here. We can do up or down, so we can actually offset the alignment up and down as we're staking. Again, brilliant stuff to do. And this will just simply bring us, as per almost staking out a reference line, but it's actually an alignment and it will bring us to bang on the centre what we need to do. And again, what you're seeing on the screen is all customizable. With this as well, when we're staking out the alignment, we can flick it into cross-section mode as well and have a look at here in cross-section mode and see us staking it out and staking out where we need to be.